Can you hear my dog moving around? Uh, I can't, but I can hear my dog moving around. <laughs> my dog has decided that Barking. now is the perfect time to start chomping on a bone. <laughs> All right. Cat, we good? We are live. We have two viewers so far, so we're good to go, Kyle. Awesome. All right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of The Blind Spot, where we talk with blind athletes reaching excellence. Woo, man, we are just uh, motoring through all of these um, just Super exciting, uh, all the stuff we got going on at the U.S. Association of Blind Athletes. Guys, just a reminder, we are celebrating our 45th year in existence, 45 years of USABA, uh, all the fantastic programming and opportunities that we, uh, uh, we provide and supporting our Paralympic hopefuls and Paralympians, um, our goalball athletes, you know, everything under the sun. Uh, we are so thrilled and excited about um, you know, being in existence for 45 years. Um, so make sure tune into our, uh, you know, tune into all the social media channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, as we are sharing so many things related to that 45th anniversary. Um, in particular, our 45 for 45 series that we put out every Friday and, and lots of content on, on goalball. And of course, uh, you know, the blind spot. Um, so I am Super excited. Um, I've been itching, <laughs> as you guys know, to, uh, to get a triathlete on here, but uh, I, I, I figured since I myself am a triathlete, I couldn't be super biased too early, uh, but I am, I am thrilled to welcome our first triathlete um, <laughs> to the blind spot, 2016 Rio Paralympian Liz Baker. Liz. Welcome to the Blind Spot. How's it going today? Good. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You know, Liz, why don't you go ahead and just tell us a little bit about, you know, your your eye condition. Um, what what can you see? What can't you see? And you know, just tell us how. Um, tell us just a little bit about yourself to to get us to get us started. Okay, I have a uh, visual impairment called Stargardt disease. So. It is a genetic disorder that it most, oops, I'm sorry, there's that dog. Most people tends to be recessive. So uh, both parents have to carry it to pass it along. Although my parents did not have it. So I'm not sure exactly how I ended up with it. Um, but it is, a, 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 so sorry. <laughs> it's a um, genetic disorder that comes about and causes the loss of central vision. It's not so much peripheral, but central. Um, and so probably my vision was about 2040, 2060 until I, a lot of people, they have a decline earlier. I had a decline around the age of 18 when I was a freshman at University of Georgia. So my vision quickly declined rapidly to a, about 2200 uh, in the matter of months. Um, and so over the years, I'll have small trickles of decline in my vision. Uh, and it can move a little into the periphery, but mostly central. So I can move about obstacles and things. I see big objects. Uh, I can't see scout. I can't see detail. Um, so for instance, I can't read fonts. I, I can't see faces, um, that type of thing. I, you know, I, can't tell in the shower, which is the shampoo versus the conditioner for sure. That type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's go ahead and just fast forward. So were, I mean, were you a, uh, were you into sports and, you know, were you into athletics and stuff, you know, 
growing up and, and how did, how did all that lead to, you know, getting into triathlon? So I, I was a gymnast at a younger age, a competitive gymnast. And then I moved into select soccer throughout high school. And I still, like I said, had pretty decent vision. So I could see the ball coming towards me, um, which now it would smack me in the face. But um, <laughs> at that time, I could still pretty well see it coming and, and, and you know, get, have pretty good eye hand coordination, foot coordination. Um, and then I went to college, my vision quickly declined. I was never a runner. I actually couldn't stand running. <laughs> I thought, why did people do it? So in college, I tried a couple of times, but it was back before your time when they had like little AM FM radios you could carry with you and you couldn't get any kind of station. So it was awful. And then they had disc men, which you probably don't remember either, which would skip the entire time you tried to oh. go out and run. Okay. Um, and then when I got to PT school, I started, I decided to do a 10, uh, a 10 K and I actually decided I liked running and they had come out with fancy new things to listen to while you ran. Um, so it made it much more enjoyable. And then when I graduated PT school, I moved to Chattanooga and I had thought, I think I'd like to try triathlon. So my vision was pretty bad, but I, you know, Racing as a visually impaired athlete has grown so much, even since 2015, that I didn't know that I could. So I didn't tell anybody I couldn't see. I went out and I got a Quintana Roo PR compact with these tiny, tiny wheels. And I started to try to race. I couldn't try. I knew I was wise enough to not try to train on the bike, but I would race and I would crash just like every race. <laughs> But I didn't want anybody to know because I didn't think they would let me race anymore. So I wouldn't tell anybody I couldn't see. I would just sort of act like I was a terrible bike handler. Uh -huh. um, and then when I had kids, I thought, well, this probably isn't super wise. So I started running a little bit more and doing more marathons and half marathons. But I wanted to do an Ironman before I was turned 41. And so that's actually how I ended up getting into paratriathlon because at that point I needed to do it safely. Yeah. So, so walk us through that process real quick. So like, how did you, how did you find your way to the, you know, to, to the para, you know, to the paratriathlon, you know, specific world? When, when did you, um, you know, so how that did was you. Two, 2014. Um, mm -hmm. And I wanted, like I said, wanted to do an Ironman and Ironman came to Chattanooga and I happened to get in and Ironman had said I could race like swimming by myself, but following a paddle border and then biking, following my husband on his bike. And then I could run, hmm. run on my own because I, this is my area, you know, it's where I ran forever. Right. I know it all. It's right. not like I didn't know the course and I wasn't going to be racing so fast that I would trip over anything. So right. um, it was like 10 days out of Ironman and the officiating body emailed me and said, we, we, noticed you were planning on racing this way that's not acceptable you you can't do that you have to be on a tandem you have to have guides well at that point i didn't know what i was going to do thankfully my coach owned a bike shop and he mm -hmm. was a decent biker and had been on a tandem so it was like i'll find a tandem we'll get it set for us and i'll be your your i'll be in front <laughs> and he said i can swim with you but i don't know how to tether well i didn't know what the first thing about a tether so we had like a 10 foot rubber band thing that we just connected to us and went down river <laughs> um, and that so it was kind of piecemeal but I'll tell you Kyle it was by far the most fun I have ever had on a bike because it was the first time that I could actually bike without constant worry about what right. I hit am I going to kill myself am I going to hit a pothole am I going to hit a mm -hmm. person walking mm -hmm. so it was so much fun and when I finished Matt Miller said you know you did did fairly well. Did you know that paratriathlon is going to be debuting in 2016 Rio? And I didn't because I didn't know anything about it. And so that was yep. that sort of started my journey. That's awesome. And then, <clears throat> so, uh, I mean, you're, I mean, you're getting plugged into the, you know, getting plugged into the community. I mean, you obviously, uh, you know, you, you know, you mention all these, you know, people that you know, kind of help you get going like if if you were to say i mean who who's been some of the bigger influences in you know your sporting life your triathlon life or, or just your your life in in general that allow you to kind of have your your out the outlooks you do have well so in life in general my parent my two parents my dad passed away in april but my mom and dad 
are huge. They, I couldn't have picked, handpicked better parents. They're just amazing people. Yep. Um, in terms of sport, I don't think I would have ever started this if my husband didn't kind of keep pushing forward because I sort of felt like doors kind of kept closing for Rio. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a bike, you know, I didn't have a guide. I didn't really know the first thing about anything. Uh, but he kind of kept hammering for me with the questions when I kept kind of stepping back. Uh, so, so, I mean, I have to kind of credit him for p pushing me through to that. And then just for all the, that he does when I'm away. I mean, we've got two kids that are super busy as well. And he already takes on so much just because of my visual limitations with driving the kids everywhere and grocery shopping and full time right. shopping that that he's been amazing. So definitely my parents, my husband, and you know, I I think that Amanda Duke has just really grown the paratriathlon program for us. I mean, even since I started, like I said, in 2015, she has done just an amazing job. Yep. Um, and then, you know, I didn't have money either. And so USABO was one thing that I did utilize at the beginning to raise some funds. So that was helpful and um, Challenged Athlete Foundation grants have, were super helpful at that time. Awesome. No, I love it. Uh, so, I mean, I mean, two kids, you know, a husband, you got a crazy dog barking in the background. You know, what, <laughs> what does your, what does your, your, your daily and your, you know, your weekly, you know, training look like? What is, what does daily and weekly life look like for, for you, Liz? I mean, cause I mean, look, I mean, we're, we train in three disciplines and, and then you're, you're juggling, you know, family and work life and all that as well. So, you know, what, what is it, what's the typical day and week look like for you? Very hectic. <laughs> I fit things in where I can fit them in. I mean, I'll tell you when we could go to the um, training center and we would actually train at the training center, that was like a vacation um, because oh, yeah. I would actually get to focus on training and myself and relax and rest um, I love my family to death. And after Rio, I said, I wasn't going to miss anything else that yep. had to do with my kids. They were going to yep. become priority. So for instance, this last week I wake up, the kids wake up at like six 30, I guess. And then my husband and I help get them ready. They get out the door around seven 25. And at that point it's go time. Like I pretty much have to get a swim in, mm -hmm. um, and then figure out when I'm going to get the second or third disciplines in for that day. So if they have like an actual competitive event that afternoon, like my daughter had a track meet Tuesday, my son's had a baseball game Monday, he had one Wednesday, he has one Thursday and he has one Friday. And then we have three soccer games Saturday. So, and then my daughter's in the track tournament next week, two days a week, along with all that baseball. So we just have a ton of stuff. So if they're actually competing, then I will do my run or my bike workout sometime after my swim before all that will begin in the evening um if it's not then they will just have like a soccer practice and there's a track there so a lot of times while my daughter's at soccer practice i'll do my track workout oh. um, so it's just kind of piecemealing wherever i can puzzle piece things together because on top of it there's laundry and there's dinner and <laughs> there's school work that the kids need help with so and then I work. So I work usually one to two days a week as a PT. Um, okay. So it's just, you know, I kind of, and my work schedule is never one, one specific day. It's always a different day when they need me. So it's pretty hectic, but somehow I make it happen. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, that's just, I mean, just speaking from experience, that's just, that's triathlon. <laughs> I mean, in, in, in a nut, in a nutshell, I mean, cause mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, we, I mean, we piecemeal together, swim, bike, run, and, you know, all you got to do is just piece it together better than, better than the next competitor. <laughs> so I, I think, I think, I, I think, uh, no wonder you, you know, you, you excel so much in triathlon. And so, I mean, let, let's rewind back to, back to Rio, um, mm -hmm. you know, cause you, you said that was such a, such an amazing experience. Um, I mean, I, I know a little bit of, you know, kind of what went down in Rio, but, you know, walk, walk our, our viewers through, you know, experiencing Rio, um, you know, the, the race itself uh, and, you know, everything around competing in, you know, 
you know, you know, paratriathlon made its debut in 2016. And, you know, you were, you were the, the, the first, you know, VI, you know, competitor for the U S to, you know, to be representing us in re at the Paralympic level. So what, what was all of that like? It was, I mean, it was pretty surreal. It was an amazing event and, uh, just we had a really good team of athletes that went over it so it was a lot of fun I had had a different guide leading up to Rio and then USAT actually ended up kind of giving me Jill um and so I had gone out I didn't know her very well we had met a couple times and trained together uh so that was it was kind of a new experience with her she's just an amazing athlete so she taught me a lot but um all of it was just I mean it was amazing Rio's beautiful so that was fun in itself the race I'm sure (laughs) Um, my, my family was there. My husband came, my kids were there. My mom and dad couldn't make the trip because of their age, but Mm -hmm. my brother and sister-in-law and my niece and nephew were there. So it was just, it's the first time I've had that kind of a cheering section and such a big event. Um, and you know, I had not really been known as an athlete because I was pretty new. So whereas all the other ladies had been racing against each other, I had no idea where I'd really fall. I didn't really have any expectations because I didn't know what to expect. Um, And so when I came out of the water, uh, I think I was in like fifth or sixth, I'm not really sure. Mm -hmm. And then on the bike, I think we we got up into fourth or third even, Mm -hmm. no fourth, we were in fourth. And then on the run, so, on the run, I was going in fourth and they were, I didn't know how far ahead of me. Um, and it was super hot and I was pretty dizzy. So we were running and I, all of a sudden Joe was like, I can see third up ahead of us. I can see third and second. So she's, that's kind of what I use her for is to like, tell me what's happening. Yep. Um, and she said, you, your cadence looks better. I think you're, you're going to be able to do this. So as we ran through transition, because it was a two loop run, I hear the announcer say, here's Elizabeth Baker, she's made up this much time on third place. Well, so on nearing like the end of the second loop, Jill was like, it's time. Like I see her, if you've got it, we got to go for it. And so I I got ahead of third place and I thought, well, I feel pretty good. I've, I've got this. I can't believe I've got this. Well, I hit the blue carpet and all of a sudden I got just so dizzy. I couldn't orient myself. And I just thought, just run dizzy. Like I knew straight ahead was this finish line and I knew I was in third. (laughs) And there were so many people cheering. It was such an amazing feeling, but I just was, I was about to, I mean, I just couldn't even tell where I was going. So I just was like, just run dizzy, just run dizzy. And then my legs just kind of went like Pinocchio legs. I mean, they were like not doing what they, are known to be able to do. And I thought, just run, just keep going. You can just keep going. And then I hit the floor. And I mean, I just, I just was out. And so I tried to get back up and my legs did the exact same thing. And I hit the floor again. And that's when I saw Melissa Reed pass right by me and head on into the finish line. (laughs) So, I mean, it was bittersweet. Absolutely. Uh, And I mean, how, how do you, I mean, how do you bounce back from something like that? I mean, you're, you're, you're in that bronze medal position. You're about to, you're about to get on the podium. You know, you're, you know, you're in this incredible environment, you know, biggest stage in the world, you know, at the time, you know, how did, how did you, I mean, were you, I mean, obviously you're disappointed. How did you bounce back from, you know, from that? Well, you know, I said I didn't have any expectations to begin with because I had no idea where I'd land. I was thrilled I was up in the top crew. I mean, that was just, I was so happy with that. And I raced that race as hard as I could race. I mean, I couldn't have given it anything else. The only thing that I think I could have done was maybe hang on Melissa a little longer and hoped that I could have sprinted it out at the end. But I felt, like I said, when I passed her, I felt really good. So I had no clue what was to come within the next, you know, quarter of a mile um so you know initially I was well I I was very out of it 
I barely made it across the finish. Like Jill had to kind of, she couldn't help me, but she just sort of made me walk across the finish and I ended up in the medic tent. So by the time I came around, I was disappointed, but I was pleased with my race. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I did what I knew I could do. I went out, I went out so hard that I had my body just didn't, couldn't work anymore. Yeah. Um, and in the end, you know, with my kids there, my kids were in second and fourth grade. And I thought to myself, what a, you know, it would have been amazing to come home with a medal and they would have been so proud of me, but what a lesson to show my kids that even though I was that close, like I got mm -hmm. up, I finished and I'm still holding my head pretty high. And so that they don't ever, cause from at that point I had, most of the races I'd go to I'd podium because it, yep. I, they're just, the competition was at some races and not at others. And so they were used to me bringing home all these medals and I never would want them to feel like they have to always be in the top um, right. or that they're not doing a good job. So I, you know, and then I kind of felt like well, what a lesson for them to realize that, you know, I was so, so stinking close, yep. but I didn't get it. But life goes on and you just keep going and you learn from what you've done and you hold your head high and you say, I gave it everything I could and it's all you can do. I, I love that. I mean, what, I mean, golly, I mean, I mean, Rio, obviously, uh, you know, the, you know, the highest, the highs, the, you know, the, the, you know, some of the, you know, obviously the lows, I mean, what do you define as, you know, successful and like, what would you say has you been your, you know, biggest success, you know, to, to this point, or, you know, has it, has it not come yet? Oh, it's come. <laughs> I think I've got it. in terms of racing, I think that probably, um, Probably, Rio, you know, I'd say that I had, I felt like I gave everything I had at Rio. I had another great race that I really loved in Australia. Um, yeah. So in terms of racing, probably one of those two races. In terms of life, I'd say that my children are my biggest success. Um, <laughs> racing wise, you know, I wasn't planning on continuing after Rio. When I had started mm -hmm. it out, I said, I'll do Rio and then I'm done. I'm going to focus yep. on life. Yep. And then I made the national team and I was starting to get funding and I thought, well, why, why stop now? But I had always said, if I can't compete anymore, I don't really want to do it. Like I want to be in the top. I don't want to just be doing it to do it. Yep. Um, and I was really pretty prepared to do Tokyo last year um, mm -hmm. until February when my father got ill. Right. And then I spent probably a good month and a half with him at the hospital. And I, I mean, my, my shape kind of declined at that point. And then I lost yep. him in April and then we had COVID. And so yep. truthfully, um, I mean, I'm 47. <laughs> and so I have noticed that the gains just don't, they don't come like they used to. Um, right. So I don't know what I'll have to give. I'm heading, this is my last, this, Tokyo will be it for me for elite yep. racing. Um, and I just really, Kyle, want to have a, I want to do as well as I can, which I always will give my max effort. That's just- yep just in me, I just do. Uh, but I want to have fun and not worry too much about where I land. Yep. I mean, you got into elite sport at 41, 42 years old. And you're, and like, like you, you said, you're 47. How, what, I mean, what do you tell, you know, women that are, or, or just anybody that's in your you know, in your shoes right now. I mean, you're, uh, you know, how do you, how do you manage? I mean, you're, you're racing against gals that are, you know, in their, in their twenties and thirties and you're, and you're still out there kicking butt. Um, you know, do you, do you think that triathlon is kind of that quote unquote fountain of youth as, as some people have, have said, or have you just managed it? <laughs> Um, I don't know how, I don't, I'm not really sure how I did it. I just, you know, I, I love to work out e ever since PT school. You know, I told you before that I couldn't stand it, yep. but I always loved after that working out, it was just fun for me. So when I thought, well, I can get paid and still work out like this is the life, like who doesn't yeah. want to get to do this all day long. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I enjoyed even more than competing. I think I enjoy the training and I always have. Um, because I just love, I love doing things like that. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, and quite frankly, sometimes I think, how am I still doing? Like when I realize <laughs> my age, I think like, how am I still doing these things I'm doing every day? Cause I just, <laughs> when I imagined a 47 year old, when I was younger that I didn't think they'd be doing this stuff. Right. But I mean, you, there are so many strong women my age, even stronger than I am. So yeah. I just think it's all about how you feel and what you believe you can do. Now, I will say, I'm not sure how I'll do this season against those 20 some year olds, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Liz, I, I just think you're a fine wine. You just get better with age. Just, just, just tell yourself that. We'll see, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Liz, this has been this has been awesome. Um, if you don't mind, we're, we're gonna do just a quick little uh, quick little lightning round. I I I enjoy doing this. Um, it's just some fun, you know, just some fun questions. Um, so, by the way, <laughs> oh come on, you'll be you'll be <laughs> fine. Oh, only one or two of them are fill in the blank. The rest are the rest are multiple choice. So, <laughs> I'm not good with this. I'm so old, my brain doesn't work anymore. Oh, come on. You're still nimble. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite post, you know, race or training snack or treat? Oh, I don't. I don't. I would have no. said beer back in the day, but now it just gives me a headache. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, all right. Dogs or cats? I think Dogs. I know the answer. <laughs> I think we all know the answer. Wait, so from... That's an easy one. <laughs> yep. You <laughs> see? Uh, do you, what, I mean, you, you said you listened to, you know, you, you got into running and stuff because you, know, you could listen to music. What kind of music, uh, do you like listening to? I like to listen to like Pitbull. Oh, okay. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. When I work out, there's a dance cardio radio station on Pandora and embarrassing enough. I, that's what I listen to. It's very bad, Kyle. Uh, very bad. Ah, no, hey, no. When I when I did race across America, uh, Dan Berlin uh, always loved uh, cranking up Kesha. So <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so no, don't don't worry. <laughs> you're you're in good company. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. All right. How do you take it? With cream. Ah, okay. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. All right. You got a fa you have a favorite chocolate treat? You know, so I'm not huge on ice cream, but if you put a chocolate chip like cookie cake in front of me, it, I'll eat the whole thing. Or Ooh. even Mmm. Yum yum. <laughs> You're a sparkling or a plain water person? Uh both. Both. Okay. Awesome. No, nah, hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> you uh you uh do you prefer to stay up late and uh, sleep in or do you do you like uh getting to bed early and, and getting up early uh, i'm not an early riser okay. but i'm not super late to bed either <laughs> gotcha so somewhere <laughs> somewhere in, in that happy <laughs> in that happy I middle myself, so i go 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 like i do not sit during the day and take breaks this is like the yep. most i probably sit and so when i hit the bed i'm done <laughs> I I hear you there. No, I I have to. Uh, you know, when it when it when it hits about seven o'clock at night, and I uh, I know that I have to I have to keep moving. Otherwise, as soon as my head hits the okay. pillow, I'm I'm out. <laughs> do you have a favorite non? Do you have a favorite activity not related to uh, triathlon? Ooh. Oh, watching my kids play sports probably. I love that. My favorite. I love that. I love that. And then, um, you know, I, I just have um, one more question, and, I, and I, I really like to ask this of all of all of our guests. Um, and that is, how do you, Liz Baker, how do you want to be remembered? Kyle, that's tough. <laughs> um, you mean as an athlete? Just, I mean, in general, as, a, as an athlete, as a person, how, how did it like- I'd like to be remembered as somebody that added a positivity to a team. Mm -hmm. um, I don't care so much about how I am remembered as, with accolades, more as my personality and how I contribute to 
making others feel around me and my relationships with others. I love that. And I, you know, having, you know, spent a little bit of time around you at races and, you know, just knowing you outside of, outside of this, you, you definitely, you do that. And, you know, you know, we were, as we were, uh, we were talking, you know, before we went live here and, you know, I, I, I can tell you that, um, ev everyone on the, on the international circuit, everyone around the, in the, in triathlon, um, they, they love Liz, ba they love them some Liz Baker. Well, that's so. what I, that's how I want to be remembered. I would like people to remember <laughs> me as somebody that is not out there trying to crush everyone else. <laughs> spirit, but raise them all up and love it. I, I just think building relationships is the one thing that is the most important thing in life I mean that's what that's what I live for absolutely absolutely Liz um do you, how, how can how can we follow you I mean are you uh pretty active on social media I mean how, how can people follow your journey to uh to Tokyo and then you know and then when you when you decide to Hanging up, how can we uh, how can we stay in touch with you? So I do have a Facebook and an Instagram and a Twitter account, but I am not very active. So um, my journey is usually covered by Jillian Peterson Elliott, who is my guide. And she has done a phenomenal job making sure to document everything that we've done because she could obviously tell that I was terrible at it. Uh, so she'll tag me in things and that's how it gets posted. <laughs> but I am not very good. I don't love being... Uh, I don't like myself being the center, so yeah. somebody else is going to have to do it for me. <laughs> I I get you there. I mean, I'm 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 usually terrible at it, but no, guys, you get you seriously got to follow uh, you know Liz and J and Jillian's journeys because um, they uh, they get into some stuff and it's it's fun. Uh, just real quick, can you can you tell uh, tell us the how how did Team Tiny come about? <laughs> I don't even know who named us that, but we are tiny. Um, we are by far the smallest two that are on the circuit, I'm sure. Um, I mean, I don't, I guess you, I'm five foot one and a half, I like to say, mm -hmm. and Jill's maybe five two. She doesn't have a whole lot over me. So <laughs> I think it was possibly Aaron who, when we were training together out in Seattle was like, I think you guys make a great team tiny. And it just sort of stuck. And I'll tell you, we went to uh, Rio and you could get the Olympic ring. Uh -huh. And we were, after we did it, we were so mad at ourselves because we got our initials on there. And then after we finished, we were like, we're going to have to come back because we've got to get Team Tiny on the inside instead. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do this time. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. Uh, Liz, this has been great. Thank you so very much for, for taking time out of your your crazy busy schedule to uh, to sit down and chat with us for you know for a few minutes, um, and I, I'm excited to get back out on the race course with you. Um, you know, well, we were just talking. Okay, you've been rocking it, so good job. <laughs> Thanks, uh, guys. Go uh, go give Liz uh, you know go shoot Liz a friend request on Facebook. Uh, also follow her guide Jillian um, Peterson Elliott. Um, you know, or you can uh, search the hashtag uh, Team Tiny. That's usually what they're uh, what they're posting up there. So um, they're they're a hoot and a holler. Uh, so, but anyway, Liz, thanks again so much, and well, everybody. Uh, hey, awesome. hey, Kyle, Kyle, we did have yeah. one question in the comment section. If Liz has time yeah. to answer. Yeah, Liz, what, uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's have a. Uh, have you answer a fan question yeah so liz this comes from tim taylor who's a teacher at the maryland school for the blind and one of our top coaches of blind soccer and tim asks what is your advice for young athletes who might be interested in doing a triathlon oh well there are so many people now that are so involved that even if they just get online and and find somebody to ask questions to um i go for it is my main thing like just keep working until you find, if you have to dig deep online to find people to talk to, everyone that has gotten involved in triathlon that's visually impaired is so open and wanting more people to do it. So 
you can even ask me, message me, I'll help with whatever I can. That's one of the things I'd really like to do when I get done racing is really give more time to trying to promote triathlon for visually impaired athletes. So I am more than happy to help with any questions or any contacts. Um, but don't give up. I mean, even if you hit these walls, just keep pushing through them because it's such a fun thing to do. Awesome. Yeah, guys. And I, I would just, I would just add to that. You know, when, when Liz says she, she will help you, she will, <laughs> you, uh, you shoot her a message. She, she gets back to you, uh, pretty lightning fast. And, you know, and, and as, as she said, just, you know, with, with any sport, whether it be triathlon, um, swimming, biking, or running on its own goal ball, blind soccer, anything, uh, just give it a try. Um, we would prefer it to be, give it a try in TRI. <laughs> <laughs> I think give it but, a try in anything. That is what I would love to do when I'm done is somehow help visually impaired individuals find sport, just any sport that they feel passionate about. It's so, it's so critical um, for, for all of us, you know, young, middle-aged, older. Um, and that's, you know, and that's the, the message that, that we try to spread here at, at the U.S. Association of Blind Athletes is that, look, we want every single American who is blind or visually impaired uh, to be involved in sport and physical activity, whether that's at the recreational level or at the or at the level that that Liz is at, where you know you're representing, you know Team USA at, you know this will be your your second Paralympics and you know crushing and crushing everybody out there <laughs> with a smile. <laughs> you're sweet. Oh, awesome, Bill. We got any other questions out there? Uh, no other questions other than uh, Tim followed up with um, asking for your email address. So if you're not comfortable giving it over the air, we can message him separately. Oh, I'll definitely give it to him. I'd love to. Okay. We'll connect you too. That'd awesome. be great. Anything I can do anytime, even with Usaba, if you guys get any information where somebody's looking for something, please let me know. Perfect. Awesome. awesome. All right, guys that we have come to the end of another blind spot our guest this week has been the one and only liz baker paratriathlete guys as always stay tuned to our social media channels facebook twitter instagram youtube we are releasing content left and right these days relating to our 45th anniversary uh, in the build up to tokyo uh, my gosh we got so much stuff going on these days so we will be back with you in a couple of weeks um i will actually be uh probably hosting the blind spot from japan <laughs> in a couple of weeks uh, so we'll look forward to that um but stay tuned to uh facebook instagram and twitter for the next announcement of who we will have on next on the blind spot in a couple of weeks and once again thank you liz so much for being our guest today Thank you, guys. All right, everybody. Take it easy and keep training and keep chasing your dreams. <laughs>